Hello, today we're going to be going over to Cherokee. It's a two, uh, 2019 and it's a 304 BS. We are going to be starting right up front here, basically with our tongue jack. Uh, basically down here is going to be how you raise and lower the camper. This is also how you get on and off the tow vehicle and you level the camper. I do always like to recommend before you unhook from the tow vehicle to make sure you're level from side to side first. Uh, the reason why is because you may have to put blocks down to roll onto them. Let that vehicle help you do that. We like to recommend using a carpenter's level right inside the doorway or they have a little stick-on levels that you can stick on in the front and on the side of your coach to help level your camper as well. Once you are level from the side to side, then you unhook from this guy, level front to back. Once you're good side to side and front to back, then you will lower your stabilizer jacks that are located on each corner of the camper and they are a three-quarter socket. I tell you that because you put it on a drill makes it a lot easier. You do have a button here for a light, um, but the light on this on this guy here is blown out. Uh, it does have the manual crank option. Back behind here is going to be where our two 20-pound tanks are. These guys have both been filled. Mine is what was used to test the propane system with. This guy here is going to be your regulator. Basically, it tells you what tank you are using. They got this little indicator on here that tells you which one you're using. At this time, I do have this tank on and this one off. I like to have one on at a time so that way I know when one of my canisters is empty. This model here is designed to where you can have both tanks on. And once the one tank has been emptied, it will start drawing from the other tank. The only thing is you don't know that this tank is empty unless you come out here and look at this indicator. Right now it's reading green that we have a propane flow. When the tank is empty, this will basically flip to red showing it is empty. From there, you would just flip this guy to the tank that it's being used from, turn the other one off, unhook it, and go get it refilled. Back behind there, behind these, are going to be where your battery is located. It's a 27 series battery. As you see, the previous owner bought a bigger battery than uh, for the box. So it is just onto the side and has a bungee wrapped around it. All right, as we come around to our off door side, you're going to have your water heater here. So with your water heater, uh, you always do want to make sure that you're always getting all the water out of this guy. To do so, you would lift this to relieve the pressure. And then you're going to remove this guy down here. This is your anode rod. It starts out the size of a dime and works itself down to the size of a coat hanger. Basically, it's attracting the impurities in the water so it attacks the rod and not the tank. This is a 1 and 1 16th socket to remove this guy. This is a gas and electric option. Your electric is going to be located down here on a switch. There's an off and on position for that guy. When you go to winterize, there's going to be two valves you would turn on the back side of this guy. Uh, I will show you where they are. Uh, but they're not easy to access or get to. This here is so that you're able to access the back of the hydraulic pump. Basically, the hydraulic pump is for your slide rooms. So you have one button that will operate all the slides to bring them out and bring them in. But if for something was to happen, you still have a way that you're able to punch this guy out. You use a little hex head, and you can use another drill to bring those rooms in. It just will take some time because it's not going to go as fast as those guys. But there's a reservoir so you can check the fluid in it as well, things along that nature. I'll show you that when we get to the other side of the tunnel box because you can actually kind of see it there. But to actually access it, I had to crawl underneath the bed to get to that area and it was not easy to get to. As you see, I am a larger individual. Next, you got your hookup here for campground cable. If you're going to use this guy, you do have to make sure you turn off the TV antenna booster and I will show you where that's located once we have stepped inside. Try to remember here, this one. Yep. Okay. So right underneath here is where you would drain your fresh water tank. There's just a cap here that you would remove, which this guy should come out because I do have some water in there at this time. So we'll go ahead and take that guy off and get the rest of that water out. Another thing you can also do with this guy is you can actually store it right inside here so you wouldn't lose it. Right in there. Alright. So as we go a little further along, uh, we got our tires here. You guys will have, there will be actually new tires being put on this this afternoon. Uh, so after 50 miles, I do recommend that you do want to check the lug nuts on these tires to make sure they are torqued to 100 foot pounds. Okay? After that, it's usually just recommended at 50, 100, and 200 miles. I always do like to say, once you guys leave the campground, 
There's usually some curves that have to be done to get out of a campground. Well, the first place we usually stop is the gas station to refuel. While you're refueling, you can also check the lug nuts. You're knocking out two birds with one stone. And then you also do want to keep these guys topped off to their max PSI level. Uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at these ones here because your other ones should be pretty much close to the same, which would be, this looks like it says 80 PSI. But please look at your tire to confirm that with the new tires. Next, we're going to have our little water station area here. Uh, this light is actually controlled from a switch on the inside. And I'll show you that when we step inside. You got your black tank flush. With the black tank flush, I do always like to recommend using a pressure regulator at the water spigot. And then go out and buy yourself a black hose. Black tank, black hose, it keeps it nice and simple. But then you're going to hook up to this and turn it on. When you go to turn this guy on, though, you do have to make sure your sewer hose is hooked up. And this valve down here, the black handle valve, is in the open position when you go to turn this water on. If your tank is already full and you go to turn this on, your, that water is going to come out of one or two places, either the toilet or the vent stack on the roof. Both situations are going to be bad. Okay, so always make sure that valve is open before you start to turn the water on. And that's what that caution sticker tells you there as well. Then you got an outside shower area here. And you have one on the other side as well, basically hot and cold water. And they got little stop knobs on them. So you can try to reduce the hot water because it's only six gallons. And then we're going to have where we would either fill the fresh water tank, which is gravity fed. So you stick the hose in and let it fill. Read the monitor panel inside so you know when the monitor or when the tank is full to shut the water off. For the city water, it's going to be on this side. It is recommended again that you will have a pressure regulator on the water spigot. From there, your options of an inline water filter, that's entirely up to you, and then your blue or white water drinking hose. Then hook up to this guy, you'll be ready to use the water system right away. On the cold side, if there's no water in the hot water heater, you do have to let that fill before water would come from the hot side. All right, so then once we've done, you've done been drink, once you've done, did your black tank, you done did your flush, you would close this guy off and then you're gonna pull to drain the gray tank. And once again, that monitor panel inside will let you know when your tanks are empty. And we'll show you that once we have stepped inside. This is where your 30 amp power cord hooks up. It does come with this coach. Your bumper will hold a sewer hose. It does not come provided with it. Uh, the elbow that comes with the sewer hose will not fit in here. I do always like to recommend that you can get yourself a plastic container of ice cream. We'll have a good time or a depressing time eating the ice cream. However, the situation rolls out for you. But once you're done, you'll be able to store that elbow inside that piece so then you can even have it in a compartment to where it wouldn't roll around and get everything nasty. It is pre-wired for an observational backup camera. And you do got a little extra gate here. Uh, the option is to put a spare tire on, but this guy will also fold down for storage, uh, for a storage rack as well, just by pulling these interior pins on each side and then it will fold down and then you just put that pin here on the outside to lock it into place so it doesn't bounce around on you going down the road. We'll show you how to open the slides here in just a few more minutes. This guy here is just so that you can access the plumbing, uh, the water, uh, the plumbing for the uh, bathroom area. That's all that's really, there. as you even see here, it doesn't say it's a storage compartment or it's not a storage compartment. It's just so you're able to access some plumbing lines. Do got our two outside speakers. Got these gold thongs so you can kind of hear it. I don't have it turned up real loud, but just kind of show you that they work. But you also have lights in them as well. Those are con uh, connected, I believe, with the awning lights on a switch. You're able to bring a TV outside. Wood mount here. Your hookups are going to be inside here. Down in the lower one. Your upper one is going to be your 110 GFCI protected outlet. This here is the back of the refrigerator. There is really anything, nothing you do in here except for maybe check for mud dauber nest or wasp nest. Other than that, usually this area is just accessible for uh, service work. This is the back of the furnace. It's ours, you see, it's already got the screen on there, which we like to recommend to keep the mud daubers and wasp out of there. Uh, if this guy does start looking dirty or dingy, try to blow this off so that it, the furnace can't is able to properly breathe. Here's that secondary outside shower I was talking about. And then in here we have our outside kitchen area uh, where it does have these guys here. So if you wanted to hang this up, you can actually have a 
a little table area if you wanted to, but it does come provided with an ice maker and an outside fridge. There is no temperature adjustments on these guys. These guys here. So your compartment doors are gonna be the 751 key. And then your shower, both showers are gonna be your black keys here. Your purple key is gonna be your entry door key. You gotta make some adjustments. leveling of the camper so as you see here you'll adjust your feet just by basically raising them up and then slide the pin back in show you guys what I'm doing here in just a second. Over here. Oh, roll behind. Right. So the reason why you have to adjust these feet is because you are going to want this as flat with the threshold as possible. Too much of an elevation can cause issues to both the screen door and the entry door if you are not careful. So a lot of times this will always have to be adjusted. When you go to flip your steps up, let's see if it's going to let me do it because I got our on and open right now. But you do have to make sure you have this door open, push back for this to lock in. Pull this guy to to lock it into place. When the door's shut, it keeps it locked in so it doesn't bounce all over the place going down the road. All right. Our entry door. So on the inside, you got a red knob. That's just gonna be for your deadbolt. Deadbolt only, your door handle and then to shut the door. So when you go to lock your, your camper up, the top will get turned to the right and it locks the door handle. Down here, you have to turn the key to the left to lock the deadbolt. You're also unable to pull the key out. It shows you that it's locked. It has to go in the up and down position to be able to pull the key back out. A lot of times if you turn it to the right thinking you're locking your deadbolt, but you're able to pull that key out. It shows you to not lock your deadbolt. Next with our awning, uh, you are able to adjust the pitch on your awning. There's two little buttons right here. You're able to squeeze these guys in and then you're able to adjust it to put, create a pitch on it. And then we have our pass-through storage compartment that I was telling you about. I do have this panel taken off so you guys were able to see there's the two valves on the back of the water heater, and that's where your hydraulic pump is and where you would check your fluid. When you go to check the fluid, you do have to make sure that all the rooms are in when you check this fluid. Okay, if the rooms are out and you're like, you look at that, it's gonna read like it's low. And then you go to top it off. Well, what happens is when all that fluid goes to go back in, it's gonna go all over the place and make a giant mess. So only check that for fluid level when the rooms are in. Underneath there, we have our manual cranks for the tongue jack and our stabilizers if you feel like working out. Did have a bottle opener as well. All right. Real quick, as you see here, it is labeled low point drains. So a lot of times, whenever you're done camping, I always like to say you open up these low point drains, open up a faucet, as you drive home, it will basically start, the air is gonna go through and blow out the lines. So you won't have any water left in the lines become stagnant or bad. Uh, you will also use those lines when you go to winterize. Basically, you're wanting to make sure you get all the water out of the coach once again, uh, but you'll, when you're done winterizing, you do have to re 
loosen those caps so that the pressure can be released off the lines. All right. Sorry, I didn't get down there and actually show you. That's all right. It's my job. All right, we have our fire extinguisher located right at the entry door. Right up here is going to be where some of our controls are going to be. This is going to be for our awning to bring it in and bring it out. You see that guy's not super fast. He is kind of slow. But I am going to leave him out right now just to kind of block us from that shade a little bit. But basically what you're looking for is that flap to be straight down. Then we got our operations to bring our slide rooms in and out. And like I said, it's hydraulic, so generally it'll start to push the one rooms out, but then the usually from what I noticed it was the back bedroom basically that goes halfway and then the bedrooms will start. And you will hear you will hear that motor on the hydro you'll hear that hydraulic motor and when it makes a whining it'll make a sound like a whining sound to let you know that all the rooms are out or all the rooms are all in. You kind of heard that whining. I don't know if you heard that whining sound. I'll do it one more time so you can try to hear it. That tells you the rooms are out. When you go to bring them in, it'll do the same thing when all the rooms have been brought in as well. The next, we have our light switches here. Um, this one, I believe, was yep, our awning. Lights. And then this one here is going to be for that scare light. Then you have uh, this one. Nope, this one might be for your speaker lights. I'm sorry. This one is going to end up barely being for that scare light at the water station. This one is for your interior lights. And then this one here controls these lights underneath here but also on the hood range. This light, does, this switch does have to be on for your hood range to have power. I actually thought there was a uh, an issue with your hood range, both the light and the fan when I first started doing my uh, inspection. But then come to find out the switch has to be on for it to have power as well. All right, so then over here on the side, uh, basically you got USB hookup, GFCI 110 hookup, and then you got your monitor panel. So the monitor panel will show you your status of the battery your fresh tank, black tank, and your gray tank. Down here is where you turn on for the gas option of the water heater, and it's HTR for heater. And then this here is for the water pump. You're only using the water pump if you're hooked to, or if you're using the fresh water tank. If you're hooked to city water, you do not need this guy. When you go to turn this guy on, this little fault light will come on until the, fire, or until the water heater is ignited on propane. Once it's ignited on propane, that light will shut off. All right, next we will try to swing in this way, or I'm going to open the door so she can go through there, and I'll see you on the other side. Uh, it does actually have hello. a hello double doors <laughs> for the bedroom area. Each side does come with a closet area. And then you have storage up top as well. Nothing aggressive or massive. Two individual reader lights. A little shelf here on each side as well, and each side does have a USB hookup and a 110. And then, this is the fun part. Uh, where is it at? Underneath here, as you see, this is as high as the bed goes. So, as you can kind of tell how much fun I had trying to crawl in here to access those lines. And then these hydraulic struts are pretty strong, so you do have to use a little bit of force to get that bed to come back down this guy here is a fire exit window so if you couldn't make your way to the door to get out basically this guy here unhooks it's on a hinge so the whole window would fling open so you're able to get out all right hello again hello again Here's going to be where you would have the mount for the, your TV for the inside. It does have a wire so you could feed it through. So if you wanted to put a TV in the bedroom, your wires would just come out here. And this is where our TV antenna booster is located. Uh, so with the booster, you do have to make sure it's on. Uh, there's a green light there. When you push the button, it would shut off the light. Well, that has to be in the off position for that cable signal feed to come through. 
But the radio signal is tied in with this, so you always do want to try to have it on if you're listening to the radio, which is going to be located right down here. So we had just our outside speakers on. That's going to be speaker zone two. Press and hold. Speaker zone one is going to be inside. Go ahead and turn that down. Uh, if you just push the power button, all it does is it mutes it. You actually have to press and hold for it to turn it off. They do have the one mount for the TV. So it would just slide right on there. But they did have an extra mount as well. So basically they just traveled, they just take the TV wherever they wanted. Uh, so if you wanted to put one in the bedroom, here's the other one. And then you can always just pivot the TVs, but a lot of people usually will not do that. This guy here is gonna be a remote for the radio. We do have storage down below here as well. Then we have our fire extinguisher, or fire extinguisher, our fireplace. You got your power button to turn it on. Right now it's showing an H for high. And it's coming out pretty hot already. But then you have basically the ambiance look. So you get nothing there. And then you have low and high. You can change the flames. Or those are the rocks. Those are the rocks. And then you got a timer setting from 30 minutes. So I believe this was five hours. And then it would shut off on its own. All right. <clears throat> so next we got our, basically our first slide here. This guy here would actually lift and folds down into a bed. Just like so, real nice and easy. You do got a USB hook up there. There's a light there as well. Uh, your individual lights here are push button above the dinette and the sofa area. This guy here will also fold into the bed by just picking up the table. You would remove the legs. They would just lay on the floor. And then the table itself is going to sit on this guy right here on, on the sides and in the back. The back one, I do believe, also has storage or storage space. These guys here, you got to lift to pull them out. And then you get quite a bit of space there. And that's on both sides. Then you got storage area, storage space up here, down below here as well. And as you see, I do have a panel taken off right here. I'm going to try to slide around this way so she can kind of see a little better. But basically, this is where you would go to winterize your coach. Uh, so you would turn to one. The one line to shut off the supply for the uh, fresh water tank and then open the other one for your antifreeze hose. You do that, you do that with the pump or with the water heater and then from there you turn on the water pump and you're ready to winterize your coach. And inside here we're going to have the bedroom area. Each side does provide a 110 outlet two usbs for the top and the bottom uh you got upper bunks uh for these guys you would just pull these guys here and it will come right down and once again we have another fire escape window so they would be able to escape these guys also do break down into count, uh, beds as well yeah it's got the hideaway beds so you remove your cushions and then pull them out it's like 1980 style hideaway beds and the mattresses to ma match. <laughs> uh, you do have cabinetry space uh, all around the back here. And then up top here is where you can put a TV back here. And you got the TV hookup up here and the 110. Always do try to make sure that there is nothing in the way of the slide rooms when you go to operate them. Uh, just because if there's anything in the way, it can cause damage on the inside and the outside of the coach if you are not careful. Uh, you do always want to also try to make sure you check these cabinets, make sure they're good and secured closed, um, just to make sure that they wouldn't potentially pop open on you. And then you go to open them and damage can occur. Uh, the lights you would turn on by hand on top with the center push button. Thank you, camera lady. You're very welcome. All right. We'll do a little shuffle here. Shuffle, shuffle. Next for the bathroom area, it's also not very spacious. So uh, basically I'll stand out here, kind of shows a couple things. You got your shower on the left side. You got your sink, medicine cabinet up above. You got your vent fan. 
You got your vent fan up here for this guy. You just open it up. And then you just, ah, the sun just got me. And then just push that button to turn it on. It's on the highest setting right now at four. And then you push the fan off to turn it off. Give you a couple towel racks. And then we got our toilet. So with the toilet, you do always want to try to leave some kind of water in that toilet. When you go to do your business, you would lightly press on a pedestal to do your business. All the way down flushes. Uh, you do always want to make sure you put a cleaning chemical in there before you go to use the toilet. Either liquid or pouches. If you do use pouches, I do always like to recommend that you put some water in the bowl of the toilet first. And then put that pouch in to make sure that pouch does dissolve. I've actually seen it where pouches have not dissolved. From there, uh, another recommendation I could say is take some nonstick cook spray, spray the bowl of the toilet. Uh, helps everything slide down easier, makes an easier clean for the cleaner. And then we have our GFCI outlet right there. So some outlets in the coach are not working. Uh, check to make sure that guy has not been tripped. All right, so then next we're going to have our thermostat here. And these guys got foam on the back side of these, so you don't try to jam these buttons. They're kind of real touch sensitive. Uh, in the off position, if you push the up and down at the same time, it'll show you how hot it is in here. So it's saying it's 81 degrees right now in here. Uh, so basically, first setting when you go to turn it on is going to be the fan. You can either have it in low, high. I always do like to recommend leaving it in the auto position because if you go to turn on the furnace, the fan on the air conditioner will come on because the fan's set at either a low or high speed. Okay? So always if... if you're running the furnace, it sounds like the fan's going on that, or the air conditioner's running, check your fan setting first. The next you'll have your air conditioner where it shows you a little snowflake. You can give that a second. That guy should kick on for us. And there it goes. And you can adjust the temperature settings just by touching the buttons. Like I said, you're not trying to jam them or trying to jam press the buttons. Like I said, you just want to just nice little, nice little touch. And then your last option is the furnace gives you wavy lines those guys come out of the ducting on the floor for your furnace the ones on the ceiling are going to be for the air conditioner you do have to make sure though this is shut for that air to come through our vents Wash our keys. so next we're going to have our fridge here uh, basically with this style fridge when you go to turn it on, it'll automatically just come on. All right, this guy will decipher on its own whether it's using 110 or using propane. All right, it doesn't give you the options of whether you're using just gas or just electric. It's, it's got its own auto setting and that's all it does. So right now we're plugged in. Uh, it's gonna be running off the 110. If we were to unplug, as long as the propane is on, this will automatically switch over to propane. If it doesn't fire on the propane, it will tell you right here. If red, check gas. So we'll let you know that. But basically, you got the fridge and your freezer. So then down below is going to be where our LP and carbon monoxide detector is located. It is recommended you test these guys every 9 to 14 days. Uh, you just want to make sure they're properly operating and working, and all you do to do that is press this button right here. And from there, it will perform its test. And then go back to green. These guys have a life expectancy of about 7 to 10 years. I have seen these guys go out before that, okay? Um, but there are, besides from propane and carbon monoxide, there are other things that can cause this guy to go off, such as cleaning chemicals, um, hairspray and animal gases okay can make that go off but if that does go off and there is no animals in the coach and we ain't been doing any cleaning let's go ahead and take the emergency precautions that we need to take if this does go off and the first person out the door is going to go turn off the propane canisters okay the next person out, the, out is trying to get anything else that breathes or anything living out of the coach but try to open some windows Okay, we're not trying to turn on the fan. We're not trying to create a spark. Okay, we're trying to be careful about everything right now. Then we're going to get 50 feet away for about 15 minutes. Then you're going to come, one person's going to come back in. And the first place I always like to tell them to check is the stove because the knobs are here on the outside. And you could have a bonehead, knucklehead friend here hanging out with you. And they're just doing this number. They're just ha ha, giggle, gaggling. 
Well, they were able to try to turn one of these knobs to where that propane is being released. Not only that, though, when you press that in, it's going to allow some of that propane gas to escape as well. Uh, if that's the case, you need to smack him in the back of the head because he's an idiot for leaning on a gas source. But if that's the case, or if it is the stove, you know, make sure it's turned off. We can turn the propane back on, and we can try to go about back the day. It is not the stove. Everything looks good on the stove, but you turn the propane back on, and it does start going off again. Okay, there's only two places that propane actually comes inside, or is actually hooked up inside the coach. That is the stove and the furnace. The only two places that propane is actually hooked up inside the coach. Uh, your fridge and the water heater are both hooked up on the outside. We'll come back to the stove in just a second. Right down here is going to be our fuse panel box. So basically anything that needs sure power to operate is going to be on your breakers. And they do have everything labeled right here for you for what they are. And then everything that runs off the battery is on the fuses. And once again, they got these all labeled for you as well. It actually looks pretty good. Everything's a 15 amp, except for these 240s. These 240s are actually for your converter. Uh, those are designed to be in place, so if somebody accidentally hooked a battery up backwards, it would blow those fuses and not damage the converter. All right, so then we got our microwave, pretty self-explanatory. I do always like to say, go set the time on this. If you guys go out and you come back, you see the time is not set on this. That means that there was a power failure. We want to look and see if that was from the campsite or from the electric company. Then we got our hood range. It's got a secondary light on there as well. And then your fan. And then with our stove, these guys just fling back like so. You would turn this guy right here. The spark ignite. You just turn it to that flame icon. When you go to light the oven, nice thing is the spark igniter will light the oven as well. You're going to do the same thing. You're just going to chain it to that flame icon. But you do have to press and hold it in while it spark ignites. A lot of times if you angle it just right, you can usually catch it right off this glass. When you go to try to light it, you'll see the spark and you'll see the flame light up. If not, you just get a little closer, you'll see that reflection off the bottom of this base as well. And then it does have lights, little ambiance lights. All right, and then we got our kitchen sink area where you do have storage down below as well. And then you got your drawers here for storing as well. Uh, so from there, we have basically made our way around the coach. Hopefully this video was knowledgeable and informational for you. If you guys do have any questions, please feel free to call us and we'll do our best to answer them for you over the phone. Thank you and have a wonderful day.